Welcome to Synthesis Workshop. Today is a research spotlight episode, and I'm very excited to have with us Michael Liang, who is a PhD student in the Meek Group at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Michael got his Bachelor of Science from Yale in Chemistry while carrying out undergraduate research in the Newhouse Group in the area of natural product synthesis. Subsequently, he moved to Chapel Hill for his PhD and has been carrying out his thesis research in the group of Simon Meek. With that, I'll hand it over to Michael. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Matt, for the kind introduction and for giving me the opportunity to share some of my work in the lab of Professor Simon Meek at UNC Chapel Hill. Go Heels! Now, this recent work centers upon the synthesis of quaternary carbon stereogenic centers by diastereoselective conjugate addition of boron-stabilized oligonucleophiles to enones. Ah, quite a mouthful, I know. To start, I'd like to give a little background on the use of stabilized nucleophiles in conjugate or 1,4 additions. Now, I'd say that the prototypical example of this transformation is the Hosumi sakurai reaction. This involves the addition of an allosilane to electrophile, such as an aldehyde or an enone, which is promoted by Lewis acid activation, such as this titanium tetrachloride shown here. This named reaction has been applied to the synthesis of many biologically active molecules, such as natural products, and I would say it was quite well studied at this point. Now, similar processes involve organometallic nucleophiles and work involving metals such as tin, tantalum, and barium have also achieved such bond formation. Now, although these reactions shown here can form all carbon quaternary stereocenters, there was a deficit of stereoselective and intramolecular processes that we had hoped to fill. An interesting report came out by the Chirik Lab in 2017, which described the use of benzyl trisboronate esters in deborylative 1,4 additions. This takes advantage of a heavily stabilized carbon ion, and these works combined inspired our lab to leverage our experience in 1,1 organodiborons and stereoselective methodologies to develop a stereoselective conjugate addition reaction to form vicinal, tertiary, and all-carbon quaternary stereocenters in a concise and operationally simple method to rapidly generate molecular complexity. Now, an active area of our research in the Meek lab focuses on the use of 1,1 organodiborons, and previous work in our lab has used alkyl 1,1 organodiborons to undergo deborylative transmetallations with, say, a metal alkoxide to generate boron-stabilized carbon ions. This can then go on to react with electrophiles and perform an antioselective 1,2 additions to carbonyls. Now, we took a note from this strategy and sought to use these recently developed allyl 1,1 organodiborons to generate carbon ions that are both boron and allyl stabilized. We hypothesized that this soft nucleophilic species would then be able to engage in 1,4 additions to alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone selectivity to be seen later on. With this in mind, um, we began our studies with this methyl and butyl substituted allodiboron species and cyclohexenone. A key objective of our efforts was to develop a robust process that was not only efficient, but also highly diastereoselective and site-selective. Early control reactions established that there is no background reaction to either 1,2 or 1,4 addition products to worry about, and a screen of various alkoxide activators at room temperature in tetrahydrofuran afforded modest product yields, but with high diastereo and site selectivity. At this stage, competitive deprotonation was a significant issue, and switching to the less basic cesium fluoride resulted in improved yields, um, which was the right direction to be heading in. A thorough screen thereafter determined that the optimal reaction additions included 50 mole percent of cesium fluoride in dimethoxyethane at 80 degrees overnight. With these reaction conditions in hand, we decided to establish a substrate scope of compatible enones. And this ranged in ring sizes from 5 to 8, and substitution around the ring at various positions was also tolerated in high yield and selectivity. I'm quite happy to report that there's compatibility with substitution visceral to the site of reactivity at the 2 and 4 positions which incidentally um, leads to an additional third stereocenter in this last example with 2-cyclopentenone. Unfortunately, um, 3-substituted and 
acyclic enones still remain a challenge in this process with gamma gamma di substituted allodiborons. Uh, speaking of which, we were able to synthesize a variety of gamma gamma di substituted allodiborons. I'd like to bring some special attention to the excellent diastereo selectivity observed in these two methyl and ethyl substituted reagents. Pendant functionality such as aryl groups and cyl ethers were tolerated, as well as strained rings such as cyclopropanes and cyclobutanes. Symmetric substrates react efficiently as well. Um, most uh, allodiborons participated in high yields and high stereo and site selectivity were applicable. However, we found that increased steric bulk, such as alpha branching, results in diminished site selectivity, such as this isopropyl substituted example here. Additionally, gamma mono substituted reagents were compatible in this method, with high selectivity observed between the Z meth and E methyl isomers of allodiboron reagents. These allodiborons were compatible with acyclic enones, unlike the um, gamma gamma di substituted variants. It allowed us to access various structures containing pendant boronate esters. We were interested in demonstrating the synthetic utility of the 1,6 keto alkenyl boronate ester products, and we're able to engage them in many transformations, such as hydrogenations and Chan Lam couplings, as well as Suzuki Miura reactions form carbon-oxygen and carbon-carbon bonds in high efficiency. Um, the hope by demonstrating these um, transformations was that we could use these molecules later on for diversity and synthesis as a way to access many structures from um, a parent structure. We also demonstrate applicability of this method to carbocycle synthesis. Now, upon oxidation of the alkenal boronate, an aldehyde is generated, which can undergo an intramolecular Aldol condensation to an enone. Alternatively, we can take this into a Horner Wadsworth Emmons reaction followed by a Michael addition to form a saturated carbocycle with four contiguous stereocenters. So, circling back to our initial proposed strategy, we were interested in figuring out just how this reaction proceeded. We were able to observe a boron enolate intermediate in the reaction via NMR spectroscopy, and upon quenching the intermediate with deuterated methanol, significant deuterium incorporation was observed. This data suggested the presence of an enolate intermediate. We had also performed the reaction with a monoboral species and found that under the standard reaction conditions, there was no conversion of product. This interesting result then led us to believe that the presence of the second boronate ester is critical for reactivity, and it's perhaps important for selectivity reaction, however that is yet to be seen. Our next steps led us to determine the stereochemistry of our products, and we were able to observe an NOE on this carbocyclic enone through NMR experiments to determine the structure. This was further corroborated by proliferation of the following compound to generate a known structure in the literature. With this information in hand, we proposed a stereochemical model for the reaction in which the favored allocarban ion addition to an enone um, which was activated by a loose acid, allows for stereoselective carbon-carbon bond formation where the nucleophile stereochemistry is transferred to the product with high stereochemical fidelity. Addition via the opposite face of the nucleophile appears to be disfavored due to sterics. With this data, we propose a working mechanism of the cesium fluoride-initiated conjugate addition where deborylative activation of the allodiboron results in the generation of a reactive allo species. We hypothesized that stereochemical fidelity is retained as isomerization would require an unfavorable sigma bond rotation shown in the middle here. Allocarban ion addition to an enome activated by either B pin F or a cesium bridge between a pinnacle oxygen and the carbonyl uh, would allow for stereoselective bond formation, and another equivalent of allodiboron may engage with the enolate to continue the process. Ultimately, we were able to develop an operationally simple method to rapidly build molecular complexity. I hope that I was able to communicate this work to you, and I'd like to thank Dr. Horowitz again for the opportunity to share my work, and I'd like to thank my advisor, Professor Meek, for supporting my research, and finally, my lab mates for their support. If you have any questions about this or anything else, please do not hesitate to reach out to me on my media handles. Thank you so much for listening. 
Thank you to Michael for putting together a great presentation, and thank you for watching this episode. I hope you've enjoyed having Michael with us on this research spotlight. To support this initiative, help us out by subscribing, and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time!